Okay, our next step, we're going to be filling the container. We've moved it out to the yard now. Uh, and this is a very important area. There's quite a bit of confusion between potting mix and potting soil. For an earth tainer, you want a, a great deal of porosity and airiness in the mix. Potting soil contains that, topsoil and so on, and that be can become very soupy and, and thick and so on and not drain very well. So be sure, if you're going to use a commercial variety, that you look for the wording mix. And here we have two, two different brands, and you can see it's clearly stated mix. These brands also come in potting soil, so again, make sure you select potting mix. So our next step here is we're going to fill the earth tainer with water, and then we're going to add in the potting mix as we continue to add water and moisten the, uh, the mix. It's very important to pre-fill the wicking basket properly. We want to get a very nice, tight um, amount of potting mix uh, firmly uh, implanted into the wicking basket because that then becomes a fountain for which the water will flow up through and disperse itself into the rest of the potting mix. So what we're going to do is load the wicking basket. I'm just using a flour scoop here to scoop in the mix. And then Gary, if you want to start pressing that down into mm -hmm. the water. And it nicely compacted down in here because again this is going to be the place where the moisture will come up through and disperse itself throughout the container. So I'm going to now, once we've got the wicking basket filled, I'm going to be scooping in potting mix here throughout the rest of the container. Now that we have the wicking basket filled with the potting mix, our next step will be to add layers of the mix and build that up in the container. It's important to continually moisten uh, the mix as you're adding it to the container. Uh, Gary, would you mm -hmm. add some water in here? If any of you have ever mixed products like sacrete or ready-mix concrete, this is a very similar process where you want to make sure you get a good distribution of moisture throughout the mix as you're working it in. I think that's good enough. Okay, get the container filled. The filler tube here is where you use the hose to add water and you add the water until you start to see a small amount come out at either of the two overflow holes that we have previously drilled. Our next step we're going to add in two cups of dolomite lime uh, and this combats blossom end rot that is seen sometimes in container gardening. There are a couple of choices that you can use but you need to make sure that you pick a product that is uh, labeled agricultural lime or dolomite lime. So we'll add two cups of dolomite lime here to the top three or four inches of the soil and we'll trowel that in. Okay Gary, if you want to mm -hmm. sprinkle this on your side. I want to trowel that mm -hmm. in uh, down to a depth of two or three inches here. Our next step is to add in our fertilizer. And again, contrary to traditional in-ground gardening, where you sort of disperse the fertilizer around the plant, what we're going to use the technique here is to use a fertilizer strip. And we place the strip at the furthest point away from the wicking basket. Now, there are a number of good organic fertilizers I like to use. Tomato Tone is an excellent product, as is Fox Farms Peace of Mind Tomato Fertilizer. You've got lots of organic choices to use today. So we'll add a one cup fertilizer strip. A 
along here. Okay, I'm ready for this side. And Gary, if you'd help me out on that side, just run the strip uh, fairly evenly back and forth. And then what I do is just take my hands and just cover over maybe a quarter inch, half inch of potting mix on top of the fertilizer strip. And that way the fertilizer strip will be uh, getting moist as the potting mix is wicking up water from the wicking uh, basket. We've now got our fertilizer strips installed on both edges of the uh, container and got a little bit of loose potting mix on top of that. Our next step will be to lower the moisture barrier. So if you take that out and just slide it down. Again here, it, it'll stretch out a bit because remember we've angled the legs down, but that's okay. We need to make a cut here in the moisture barrier to go around the filler tube. So we've got that done. And now we'll just take and lower this down. Pull it back over. Okay. And we'll stretch this out. Oops. And, get, and the top should just clip on. So our next step will be to place the tomato plants. In this container, earth container, we're using uh, two plants uh, today. Gary, you, you want to Cherokee describe them? Purple, Cherokee purple and uh, we have Nevis Osorian red. And both these uh, varieties you can receive from tomatofest.com. They're good heirlooms, very good varieties. You have a red and a purple variety. So now in terms of placement of the plant, we want to look at the center area of our lower hoop here and just draw an imaginary area and just carve an X into the plastic mulch here. Now in typical in-ground gardening, it's recommended to plant the tomato plant as deeply as possible. In the earth tainer, what I found is that we don't have to plant deep. With the wicking system, the roots will actually grow down to the bottom of the uh, mix and sometimes even through the aeration bench and down into the actual water reservoir itself. So we're just going to plant at a, a normal planting depth here. I'll just dig out some of the mix and we can just set it anywhere. Take out our plants here. Break up the root ball just a little bit. Insert the plant up through the hoop. And then scoop the, the mix back in. Pack it down firmly around the tomato plant. And then the last step is to take the mulch and try to cover as much of the surface as you can. Again, our goal here is water conservation and why give it up to evaporation needlessly. So we want to recover this entirely to keep as much moisture within the earth tanner as possible. And uh, let's see, we need just to hit it with a little bit of water, Gary. This is the only time you will ever top water uh, the earth tanner, just right on the plant. And here we just want to have a good, good mix of the potting mix and the planted root ball. And again, then any excess there will drain off into the water reservoir. So now we have a self-sustaining engine here, if you will, of water in the water reservoir, wicking up through the wicking basket and distributing throughout the potting mix to the plants roots. The roots will grow and absorb and drink up just as much water as they want and the result will be a very, very good, robust and healthy uh, plant growth. And so, how long did it take to put all this together? Think? Well, it, uh, it takes normally about an hour and 15 minutes after you've done the first one. Today it took a little longer mm -hmm. for, for ours, but once you get a system going, for example, I take and pancake three of the aeration benches together and drill the holes through three of them at one time. 
So that kind of technique can gain you some efficiency. Right. So if you're going to build six or so of them, uh, you'll average about an hour and 15 minutes uh, per system uh, at the end of the, uh, the process. An hour and 15 minutes well spent. Well, good, Gary. Thank you very much for coming over Thank today. You, it's been a, a lot of fun having you here. You're a great assistant. Now you can go off and build retainers to your heart's content. I love it. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank you.